Welcome back guys. In this week's video, we are gonna go over why the Holset HX35 is the very best budget turbo you can buy. On top of that, we're gonna take this one and we're gonna make some modifications so that when the time comes, it's ready to get bolted onto our five cylinder swap Porsche 944. If you guys can hear the fan noise in the background, I apologize, it's really hot in the shop right now. So let's dive right into this whole set turbo. Whole set makes a number of different sizes of turbos. All the ones that I've seen and played with have been from diesel engines originally. This one came off a late 90s Dodge Ram with the Cummins diesel, and I picked it up for 250 bucks shipped on eBay. While I could just bolt this thing on exactly how it is and send it and not have any issues whatsoever, I thought it would be better to go ahead and customize it a little bit more to suit my application. One of the biggest things you'll run into with whole set turbos is the turbine housing itself, the exhaust housing. They're often way too large for the application that you or I would be using this in. This one happens to be a 12 centimeter housing, so it could probably be used. But what I did, let me, let me grab it here. What I did was go ahead and buy a true T3 housing with a 0.82 AR. So this is gonna work much better for my application. This is actually perfectly matched to that five cylinder. And on top of it just being a better fit uh, in actual sizing, it uses a standard size V-band clamp on the outlet, which the whole set does not. It's a weird metric V-band. Same thing with the compressor housing, but we'll go over that in a little bit. The other thing with the factory whole set setup is it is an internal wastegate and I am not gonna run an internal wastegate. A, I don't like how bulky they are. B, I wanna dump my wastegate to atmosphere because it's awesome, and because this is a track car, so who cares if it's a little noisy. The first thing I wanna do to go ahead and disassemble this and start modifying it is get the exhaust housing off. Now, I have already done this, which is a good thing, otherwise this video would be about an hour and a half long and would include lots of cursing and fire. Basically, between the center section and the turbine housing, there are four bolts that hold these straps down and that holds the center section into the exhaust housing. Now, after years and years and years and tens of thousands of miles, all the heat cycles and corrosion basically just made those into one piece. So like I said, it took a lot of heat, penetrating lubricant, and stick it in a vise and prying on it and hitting it with a hammer and throwing water on it and whatever. But we finally got it to move. Uh, so thanks to my friends, Alan, Dan, and Sam for helping me out with that. So anyway, now that that's been done off camera, this is gonna be a piece of cake. These are the bolts and the strap I was talking about. There's two of these on this particular housing. There's actually three on my new housing. With that and the vacuum boost line disconnected for the uh, wastegate actuator, we can go ahead and pick up the compressor housing and center section all as one assembly and pull it out of that exhaust housing. And here you can see the exhaust wheel is in really good shape. There's no nicks or cracks or any issues. From what I can feel, there's zero shaft play, there's zero in play this turbo seems to be really, really healthy. In order to get the compressor housing off, we're gonna squeeze this clamp right here. And once we pull that clamp off, the compressor housing will just pop off as well. Lucky for me, it's the exact same story with the compressor wheel. Everything's in beautiful shape, no issues whatsoever, and the turbo just feels great. There was really zero need for me to take the compressor housing off. Once I got it in the car, I would likely have to loosen or remove that clamp to clock the housing where I wanted it to, but in this phase, it wasn't necessary. The reason I did it is because this compressor housing has been painted black. I don't mind that. However, it got painted black a while ago, and the paint is chipping, and it didn't even get painted in some portions, and it's got paint marker on it and whatever. So me being a little bit anal, I'm gonna throw it in the blast cabinet and see if I can't get it cleaned up. As you can see, that is looking a whole lot better. Basically, 
looks brand new. Before I continue assembling this, uh, I should probably start talking about why I think this is the best budget turbo. To give you a good example of what the Holset HX35 is capable of, it's basically the same as a Garrett GT3582. Not the GTX Gen 2, all the new technology. I don't think that the compressor wheel is quite on that level. But as far as the sizing of the wheels and the compressor housing and the overall power potential, basically the same thing as a GT3582. People have been using the Holset HX35 on anywhere from 1.8 liter Hondas all the way up to five liter Fords. In my particular application on a 2.5 liter five cylinder, I'm expecting full boost around 3,500 RPM. The engine's gonna rev to 7,200 RPM, so there's gonna be plenty of power band there. Now, like I said, I got this turbo for $250 used on eBay. I got my new turbine housing for $150 shipped on eBay. So I've got $400 in this whole turbo setup. In comparison, my buddy Alan, who is also doing the 07K swap, he's running a Garrett G25 660. Same power levels, a little bit more compact package and newer technology, but it's $1,800. On the other side, we've got the Chinese turbos that are littered all over eBay as well. The ones that are less than $200, honestly, I wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. I know there are people out there that have done it and uh, haven't had issues, but it's not something that I'm comfortable doing with my build. There is one manufacturer out there that sells Chinese manufactured turbos that's pretty reputable and people seem to like, and that's CX Racing. CX Racing has a line that they actually assemble in the United States, so my assumption is they're getting all the parts from China, and then they do the final assembly in the States, and they're saying that they balance them and everything else, I think it's called the X Series, but a GT3582 in that X Series of the CX Racing is like $485. So for me to get a reputable turbo, one that was designed for diesel engines, so a, it's extremely robust. It's designed to last hundreds of thousands of miles. B, it can handle really high boost pressures. C, this particular one has an anti-surge compressor housing. This ring here is a silencer that I may or may not take out at a later date and see how much more noise it makes. But there's a lot of technology packed into this turbo at just really a pretty ridiculous price. And if I was going super budget, I probably would have slapped it on with that 12 centimeter housing and called it a day. So anyway, that's that's the deal with the HX35. People are making 600 horsepower with it. They're extremely robust. They're very cheap. I think it's just gonna be a great match for my 2.5 liter. With all that being said, let's go ahead and continue assembling this thing. Because I still don't fully know how this thing's gonna have to be clocked as far as the compressor and exhaust housing, I'm just gonna go ahead and snug these bolts up for now. Compressor housing's next, and then this thing's assembled. And there we have it. My HX35 is freshened up and ready to go in the car. We now have a 600 wheel horsepower capable turbo, should be an extremely reliable turbo, for $400. I couldn't be any happier with how everything turned out. If I was really gonna go nuts, I'd try to rebuild the center section, but my concern there is that I don't have any way to rebalance it. I don't know if you can just mark everything and try to assemble it exactly the way it was, if it would be balanced. I don't wanna take that risk. So the center section seems like it's in great shape. No play, no issues. We're gonna slap this thing on, see how it does. And the really fun part, is we're gonna compare this directly to the Garrett G25 660 on the dyno, and we're gonna see the difference between a $400 turbo and an $1,800 turbo. So, if you wanna see that, more of the five-cylinder swap, our 3.8 turbo Cayman build, etc., hit that subscribe button. Thanks, guys. See you next time.